today. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for being here today. I'm really excited to uh, introduce this to you. Uh, to, kick, to kick off today's call, please introduce yourself in the chat, which we've already started. And um, if you want, also share um, your answer to today's icebreaker question, which is what is your favorite, what's your favorite subject in school growing up? And I'm gonna move on from this slide, but yeah, just keep going. And just the acknowledgement, uh, the team's program curriculum and materials was created by the American Academy of Pediatrics. Uh, thanks to funding from the CDC, um, partner uh, participation as a team's trainer does not imply endorsement by the AAP or the CDC of any individual organization, product or service. Um, the team's program curriculum and materials are under license by AAP. Uh, but team's trainers are not considered an employee or agent of or associated with the AAP or CDC. And then before we get started, uh, just run through a, a couple of quick housekeeping items. Um, the presentation is being recorded. A link to the recording will be shared with attendees. We plan to mute everyone during the presentation. Uh, except that we will unmute at, for a couple of times because we're going to have a little bit of interactive discussion um, as part of this today. And then questions can be submitted at any time through the chat box and will be answered either, you know, by Penny if she can answer them during the um, the session or uh, we'll have some Q&A uh, checkpoints as well. So... Um, this is really for you as project uh, program participants. Uh, the contact content will help you prepare for upcoming activities um, that will take place during this program. And so please take advantage of this time to ask any questions that you might have. We're going to start off with introductions today, and then we're going to do a little bit of an overview of the team's program so you know what to expect over the coming months. And um, we'll discuss uh, building your team and then wrap up with next steps. At the end of today's session, you will be able to explain the purpose, goals, and structure of the team's program, identify the steps of the team's framework, describe the benefits of working as a team, and list strategies for building a successful team. And I left off here but um, you'll also be able to access the HATS tool after today. Um, I will send the information on how to access that in the follow-up email. And then of course, if you have any questions with that, you can also um, I have Walter reach out to us anytime. Feeling tired and shivering in this class. So teacher wanted, and he had a bit of a cough. So teacher wanted me to check him out. He does have some um, very kind of weak Sorry, Timmy, I just did mute all and it also muted you. So can you unmute yourself? Tammy, you're still muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thanks. Hi, Abby, thanks for joining. We're just getting started. So I'm Tammy Diaz. I'm the school nurse specialist with the Maine Department of Education uh, Coordinated School Health Team. And Penny, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Penny Townsend and I'm school-based health center coordinator um, for DHHS working over the Maine CDC. So I get the uh, opportunity to work with about 20 state-funded school-based health centers across the state. Awesome. And we are going to do something a little different during this presentation. We are going to ask you all to unmute if you don't mind and tell us a little bit about yourselves, introduce yourselves and um, where you're from and um, 
you know, maybe one of the things that you like the best about school nursing. And this is going to be like a quick, like 30 second introduction. And feel free to do it popcorn style or Penny, you can call on people. I can't see anybody while I'm sharing screen. Maybe I'll stop share for a minute. Lori Hansen, do you want to go first? You're muted. <laughs> Are they able to unmute themselves? Yeah. Janet says no. Uh, just going to unmute themselves right there. There. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Got it now. Oh, good morning. So uh, my name is Lori Hansen. I am from RSU 74 working for Carol Beck. Um, and this is my 10th year of school nursing. And it is challenging. Um, what I like best is uh, working you know, now with kiddos, like I saw a kiddo yesterday that um, I've had for 10 years, that's really something to watch these kids grow. <laughs> it's an honor. I feel yeah, like really. old mother, I, I call myself old mother Hubbard. <laughs> All right. And Lori, is there anybody here on your team? It, on my team, no, I'm by myself. Thanks I, for being I'm here. I'm the only nurse, yeah. Okay. Nicole Furlong, do you want to go next? Um, I'm Nicole Furlong. I am the um, school nurse liaison for the Western region, so Andrew Scott and Franklin, Oxford counties. Um, and when I was in school, I really loved the connections with the families. Um, and now I like the connections, working with the nurses um, and being able to see everybody's different practices and um, every all the uniquenesses of the different offices. Um, who wants to go next? You guys. I'll please. go. I'll go. Hi, I'm, Hi. I'm Jennifer Aguirre. I am the school nurse at Dayton Consolidated School in Dayton, Maine. Um, and I am pre-K to grade five. And I guess my favorite part is being able to access these kids when they're younger to start their health habits early. Awesome. How about Brunswick schools? I can go. What? So Tammy, I was helping someone when you said the question. So can you restate it for me? Just very informal, just like who you are, kind of where you're at and, and uh, your favorite thing about school nursing. Okay. So Wait. my name is Jen Bodish. I'm the school nurse at Brunswick Junior High School. Um, I've been here for four years in the district for five. Um, what I love about school nursing, you know, I just have these days at the end of the day, it's like being a parent, you've got everyone tucked in, everyone is good and well, and you know, like, I just love it when my, when my school functions well as a whole, I'm very whole child focused, I'm very connected with every teacher and every department, and I feel like there's a lot of mutual respect, and that that respect trickles down to our students and models really good relationship habits and communication habits. Mm. I have very supportive administrators. I can't say enough. This is the perfect, you know, it's just like the perfect place for me to be. And I really love it. I enjoy educating my students and my staff. Um, you know, I was just with a student who injured their left deltoid and we were kind of going over the etiology of why that happened, but in their world and their frame because junior high is wild. And I feel like it's like the most exponentially developmental part of a kid's life. And I'm just honored that I get to be a part of it and help them. That was way too long. Okay. Good. I'm I'm the other part of Brunswick, so I'll go next. <laughs> That's here. Um, so um I'm Janet Rivard. Um 
I have been a school nurse in Brunswick for, for 20 years. Um, Jen and is one of the team members of the nurses, but as far as our team, that's okay. I have a little friend with me who's sick, so I'm going to... Um, our team is, um, I don't know, the longer I've been a school nurse, the more I realize my team is my entire community. Um, it is not only the school nurses and our administration and um, our school physician and our ESOL coordinators who help us, but it's also um, members of the community um, who are, um, you know, other healthcare providers in the community. So I guess I'm part of this enormously great, wonderful community team anyway. And I love school nursing because no two days are the same. In fact, no two hours are the same. It always changes. So true. So true. Um, I'm just going to take a second to, uh, Kind of also say, if you need to turn your camera off because you're caring for a student and just listen in, that's totally fine. Um, please, yeah, do what you need to do for confidentiality and, and all of that. So, um, yeah. Um, and let's see, Nurse Abby, do you want to go next? Hi, I'm Abby Folsom. I am from the Augusta School District. Um, I'm at Lincoln Elementary School, and um, this is my third year at Lincoln and fourth year in the district. Uh, I came from ER, so definitely different. <laughs> Good difference, <laughs> but definitely different. Um, and what I love, there's a lot of things I love about school nursing, but um, I definitely give like Disney princess vibes versus like hardcore ER, you know, so this is definitely the right move for me, but um, the thing I love most about school nursing is, you know, it was a big, it was like a pride thing going from, from ER to, to school nursing, I think, and um, the thing that I like about it is, which people don't understand it, is, is it, it is what you make it, um, mm -hmm. and you can do as much or as little as you want, um, obviously, within constraints, but um, I think you could do it as much as you want and educate kids and really be a part of their lives. And, you know, they, they carry, they carry you with them. So, and the things that you say with them for a very long time, in my opinion. So that's what I love about it. Okay. Nick, do you want to go next? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Nick Euler. I'm one of the school nurse regional liaisons with the DOE, and I live right outside of Bangor. Uh, I've been a school nurse for about 12 years, and um, I would echo everything everybody said about what we love about school nursing. And I just love that feeling that we're we're making a difference and we're really setting our students up for success. And I think we just we have Lisa and Lori left. I'll go. Um, Lisa McKenna, I'm a school nurse in Presque Isle, SAD1, and I've been a school nurse for full-time for 12 years. Um, my favorite part about school nursing is the diversity. There's, like um, someone else said, there's nothing, there's never uh, a day or an hour that's the same. Um, and I do like wrapping up my day and um, having done a day well, whether it's finding a student um, a vision screening that really needed some help or um, giving an EpiPen to somebody who needed it and, um, you know, having things go well. Well, you, Lori. My turn. <clears throat> I'm Lori Hewitt. I am a school nurse liaison for um, Southern Maine. That's Cumberland and York County. And I don't think I can add a whole lot to what everybody has said about school nursing. It's amazing. I um, have been a school nurse for about seven years and I've been lucky enough to be working in this role as a school nurse for the department. And I absolutely love connecting with school nurses and seeing what everybody's doing in their, in their communities. Thanks, Lori. Thanks everybody. So um, this, cohort and um, this program is kept small intentionally so that you all can um, become closer together and support each other through this process. 
what we're going to be providing for information is going to seem like uh, maybe a little overwhelming. Um, don't stress. It's we're very um, one. We're here to support you with anything you have questions on, and um, we want you to have this this experience and these tools um, to you you utilize at your capacity. Um, so if you can only do, you know, maybe one portion of the assessment this year, then that's what you can do. But, you know, you'll learn how to use the tool. You'll learn how to do the action plan. You'll have this tool available to you for years to come and you can use it annually or biannually and make it. We really want this to work for you. So that being said, there's quite a few slides. So I'm gonna share screen again, and we are gonna go through them at warp speed. Just a reminder, as TME is going through the slides, I will be monitoring the chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in. Thanks, Penny. Okay. We're gonna uh, start with the Teams program overview. I think, there we go. Okay, so a little bit of background. Um, this is an American Academy of Pediatrics program. Uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics is a nonprofit membership organization of approximately 67,000 members. Uh, the organization is dedicated to attaining optimal physical, mental, and social health for all infants, children, adolescents, and young adults. The AAP has a longstanding commitment to school health. At the national level, the Council on School Health is composed of pediatricians and affiliate members, including nurses, counselors, and all allied health professionals. So if you're interested, you can consider looking online at that Council of School Health um, if you might want to consider joining that, um, just if you're interested. Um, the AAP has published over 20 policy statements on school health, as well as several school health manuals and reference guides. Um, and they also have strong partnerships with other national organizations that work to improve school health. At the state level, many of the Academy's 59 chapters also operate school health committees. Um, and as many of you know, uh, our main chapter just over the last two years also formed a school health committee. So brand new, very exciting. Um, and then the AAP is engaged in a variety of grant funded projects uh, around topics related to school health as well, including uh, multiple teams projects like we're doing here today, aimed at working with states and school districts to improve health services. This uh, teams model background, um, the the program grew out of the recognition that strengthening school health services improves the health of students and leads to better, better educational outcomes, that schools provide a key point of access to health care for many children, and that children benefit from Are you, I think that you guys might not be seeing the right slide. We can see your slide. Are you seeing my team's model background? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I feel like that went on to the next slide, but I'm gonna just keep going. Um, so <laughs> teams, this is the TEAMS model background. TEAMS stands for Training, Education, Assistance, Mentorship, and Support um, to leverage partnerships um, and improve school health is the program purpose. And then the past topics um, have been chronic conditions, sexual health, mental health, vaccine confidence. And I do have to say right now, they're doing an oral health TEAMS um, module that will be added to the HATS assessment from what I've uh, been told, which I'm really excited about because right now it is not part of the, the current HATS uh, tool. 
But after in the next year or two, that oral health section is also going to be added to that health health um, that HATS tool. So you'll be able to utilize that to evaluate your oral health program if you have one. And this is that that where I was just talking about. Um, um, schools provide the key access to to. Um, uh, for healthcare for many children, strengthening uh, school health services improves the health of students and leads to better educational outcomes. And children benefit from a coordinated system in which school health services, health departments, and medical providers work together to optimize care. So again, talking a little bit more in depth about the purpose of teams um, is to assist school districts in making improvements in their health services. Um, it emphasizes partnerships and the development of policy and protocol to drive long-term sustainable change. Uh, specific goals are for participating um, school districts are to implement policies and practices to promote student health and reduce health-related barriers to learning, to enhance the breadth and quality of schoolhouse services, uh, to develop the capacity and infrastructure to sustain effective uh, health services, and finally, to enhance collaboration and relationship building skills. While the HATS assessment can be used to tackle a variety of school health topics, as your team completes the assessment, you'll determine the areas of highest need. Your team should pick one or two areas to focus on for this school year. Additional areas can be addressed in the future. And once you register, you will continue to have access to the assessment tool like we talked about. So, Teams has teams has two parts to it. The first part is like building the team that and many of you already have built teams that this is going to slide. This pro program is going to slide right into um, very easily. Um, but we're going to talk about the the team framework because that is part of the program. Um, and then the second part of it is is the assessment part. So hang in there with me. If you already have a team, you might still get something out of this. Um, so this is the team's model framework. It outlines uh, different components and the different components will we will work through during this, this program and is, is divided into two phases. There's a strategy and an implementation phase. Uh, teams support school districts and states in building their capacity to do several um, key things including getting folks from different roles and different entities working well together, engaging community members and developing partnerships, assessing relevant policy, practice, and infrastructure, uh, strategic and actual planning based on identifiable, identified priority areas, and then implementing your action plan after you develop it. And then Again, evaluating program implementation and outcomes, which we do all the time in nursing. So um, as the strategy, strategy phase, um, you can see here, implementation phase, that was just a fancy little slide. Um, during the strategy phase, You'll start by building your leadership team, ideally consisting of the school district uh, health services representative, a local health department partner, probably maybe if you have someone that you work with outside the school, um, possibly a physician partner, um, if you're thinking about doing the mental health module, and even if you're not, you might want to consider uh, getting your uh, either guidance counselor, licensed clinical social worker, anyone from your mental health services um, department on board. Uh, you'll know who the best people are in your own school um, that will want to be a part of this. If you're working on something like infrastructure, um, administration, 
obviously is is someone that you'll want to have on board and and be talking with. Um, and then the next steps is to identify your issues. Uh, during this step, you'll collect data, assess your health services, and gather input from uh, any partners. And then you'll use that information to set goals and determine the best strategies for reaching those goals. I'm gonna help you through all of that. Um, and then you're gonna develop a strategic action plan focused on the details and specific steps needed to work towards your goals. Strategy phase, data collection. Once you've developed your plan, you'll move into implementation. And all right, here's the fun part. We're going to do something that I'm hoping will work. <laughs> um, we are going to be supporting your team in a variety of ways. Um, through this cohort of the team's program, we're going to be focused on offering online uh, training, such as topics, uh, such as working with partners, maybe assessing and prioritizing critical health services issues, um, program evaluation, and key school health topics, and as well as uh, successful program models. The sessions will be customized based on your needs and interests, and um, all team members are encouraged to join the sessions. Each training and full cohort call will include, this one's, uh, This sometimes concludes breakout time. Um, we actually are not gonna do breakout time as we know you guys are doing this in the middle of your day, and um, we're gonna, allow you to have that time to work when it works for you and your team members outside of this meeting. So online trainings, you can have the health assessments tools. Is this when we watch it? Oh, yep, the poll. Look at you. Yes, launch the poll. Yes, I was so anxious to watch the poll, but I got I want to see. Excited. I know, I want to see if I can, if, if, I, if I can see it too. Let's so hope this goes as planned. Yeah, so we do have a poll. Um, we have, I believe there's two sessions that are gonna be topical education sessions, um, which will be a short educational session, uh, whoever gets the most votes on these. And these are those sessions that are optional to attend. Um, so can, the first one is- Can everybody session, see the poll? Oh, I can see it too. I, I have, have launched it. So, so if you, you want to just click, click all that apply. Oh, wait, can you see the answer? Oh, fun. So um, we're going to be, so the, op the two optional sessions, one is going to be, uh, the first part of it is going to be based on this poll, we'll provide a, a little short educational session. And then the second half of that is going to be to help you all with anything you need on your action plan, um, any troubleshooting of issues you're having with your action plan, whether it's creating it, figuring out your goals, um, anything like that. So it's just going to so be- I'm going to give you just another minute. It looks like only two people or three people have completed it. So I'm going to give you another minute before I end the poll and wrap up the results. So if you haven't had a chance, if you could just take a second and quickly um, rank those and which ones you prefer the most that would really help us plan. Now I'm gonna keep going. Oh, should I keep going or should I wait? Um, has everybody had a chance? It looks like we have five of eight, it says. Tammy, and we, we're probably included in that, so I think that is good. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Yeah. Can you all see the results? Can we understand the results? Here are the results. Oh, that's really cool. Look at that. Can everybody see it? Penny, it looks like you're going to be doing a session on school-based health centers. Great. Are you reading that right? 
the blue is strongly prefer, and then, then it goes down into the, uh, you can see the scale. Can you see the scale right now that I have up? Yeah, it definitely looks like we're gonna do a session on school-based health centers. Awesome, thank you. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing this and hopefully it goes into our recording today. Looks like absenteeism is an, a strong interest as well. And health equity. Okay, we're gonna move right along. So you're probably wondering what you all need to do. We're gonna run through this real quick. Come to the meetings, um, complete the assessment, uh, you know, one or two modules, you can do as much of the assessment as you want. If you're like, wow, this is amazing. I want to do everything. But also, you know, um, take care of yourself when you're doing it. And um, if you do the whole assessment, it might be very difficult. We'd rather you do a smaller portion and be able to be successful in meeting the goals that you um, attain, that you set for yourself. Um, so yeah, um, so collecting data and doing the assessment, developing the, and implementing the strategic plan. Um, and at the end of every session, you will have a feedback form, uh, survey, uh, that we'll, we'll put in the chat. Um, and once you complete that survey, you will get a certificate for your contact hours. Um, it'll say, thank you for completing. And then it should, I believe, if, if I did all of the technical stuff right, email you a certificate or it might pop up on your screen. So if something's wonky with that, please email me and let me know and I'll troubleshoot any technical problems on my end. Thank you. Okay, so this is kind of a project timeline of how, what's, how this process is gonna go. Um, this is your first session today just kind of getting familiar with everything. Between October and November, you're gonna kind of look at the Teams that Hats assessment, that the Hats uh, tool, and you're gonna kind of think about, and you can meet with your team uh, that you uh, develop at your school district. And you can look at the tool together if you want. Um, and then you're just gonna decide what you wanna focus on, what your areas of, of focus might be. You know, what, what's your st school struggling with the most? Some of that might come from completing part of the assessment. So meet with your team and um, access the hats. And then we will meet again on November 12th. and we'll um, keep moving forward and see where you're at with the HATS assessment and if you need any assistance with that as well. Also know that you can email us anytime if you're having trouble getting into the HATS assessment. Um, sometimes it is a, a little bit wonky too. It might have some delayed moving from one screen to the next. It usually works pretty smooth, um, but just to give you a heads up, if there is any hiccups, you might just have to wait a minute. Do we have any questions so far? Uh, like a few of these slides, just curious. I'm oh, yes, ready. yes. Okay. I'm going to give you the slides will come to you in a PDF and then you'll have the recording as well. Yeah. Who were your suggestions as far as who would be part of our team? I'm a very small, small school, so I'm just trying to narrow things down here. Yep. And um, so great people to think about for members of your team. Um, if you have a guidance counselor or a social worker, um, administration is a great person to have on your team. That could be an assistant principal, uh, principal. Anyone that like knows about the infrastructure of your school that, um, you know, that works with any kind of policies um, would be a good team member. It could just be a, a teacher that has an interest in, um, you know, kind of the health and well-being of your school. That's willing to look up, look through policies. 
online. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and then you can also have some outside partners. You could, you could, uh, or your um, school health advisor is also someone that you might engage or invite to uh, be a team member. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, definitely consider inviting your school health advisor. Sorry, 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 we just had a hand up. Hi. Um, so um can this be more <laughs> district focused yeah. as opposed to school? Because I I think school-based health centers, I we we just talked about that um in our nurses meeting just before this. And this was an important thing for both Jen and I, both being on this. Um I think um that would be an area where um you know I, I mean Jen and I need to talk about this, but I, I could think that that would be an area where we could impact our whole community. And um so I guess that's my question. Can it be district focused? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're going to notice when you go through the HATS assessment as well, it will be district focused because you are going to be some of it. Can, I mean, you you can do it just as a school, but you are going to be looking at district wide policy because policy is always pretty much district wide. Um so, so yeah, absolutely. You can do it as a district, as an entire district. I hope that answers the question. We're going to fly through forming a team because I think we've already talked a lot about it. Um, so you've seen this before. Um, so we there's some kind of fun stuff in here though. Um, so many definitions of a team for our purposes, uh, we're using the one from Katzenbach and Smith. And it's a small number of people with complementary skills that are committed to a common purpose, performance goals, and approach for which they hold themselves mutually accountable. So one of the key distinguishing features of a team is that they are responsible for the for joint for a joint work product. It's not just a group that shares information or strategies. Um, they're also doing the work together. They're all in. Um, team members are co-creating something that moves um, them toward a shared goal. For this project, uh, you'll be bringing your complementary skills, knowledge, and resources together, working jointly as a team with a common purpose of improving school health services in your state. I know someone here is from a really small school and has a really small team, and there might be more than one person that has a very small team um, of, of people that will be able to help with this program. That is okay too. You can still use this tool. You can actually, I had a nurse use it independently last year and they were able to um, make some policy recommendations and develop um, a proposed policy and present it to their administration. So, um, so I know we're focusing a lot on this being two part process and part of the process being the team but I know that a lot of you also, um, you know, school nurses, we're out there <laughs> doing the work and we don't always have a lot of support. So um, working with your uh, administration and if you have any other health personnel or that you can get on board, obviously is more ideal. But if, if you are, um, flying solo, then that's okay too. So um, recommended team members, we kind of talked about this a little bit. Uh, here's it in writing. I like that they put local health department partner here because um, sometimes we do partner with, I know for a lot of the schools around here, we partner with uh, in central Maine. I know you've heard me say it a lot. We partner with Maine General um, for flu clinics. They also support the naloxone movement. So 
I don't know if there's someone locally for each of you that you guys partner with regularly that might want to also be on board and, you know, peek at this with you. Um, whether or not you need to have school approval to share with anyone outside while you're doing an evaluation policy is usually um, public information. So um, just some things to think about. And, you know, maybe you can get three team members identified that can help you work through this and work together. Um, this talks more about team um, and the reasons to try and have a team, um, bring additional content knowledge from each of your uh, areas of expertise. That's where like, if you're thinking about um, the way things work, uh, administration might have a little more knowledge about how things work with school boards and, you know, getting those policies passed so they can support you if you have some ideas about policies and things like that. Um, and same with like, uh, if you do the mental health module, it makes sense to have a mental health professional on board that can also advocate for any changes that you all identify that might strengthen your services in your um in your school district. So, and um, this kind of looks at what the partner contributes and what the partners can gain. Um, over 10 years of implementing teams in the field demonstrated the, that's how long this has been, um, this program has been, um, happening since, actually, I think it's been longer than that. Yeah, because I think it was started in 2011. Um, the value of the partners working together and um, just looking at the unique viewpoint assets and capacities that when combined um, are greater than the sum of all their parts. I'm not gonna read the whole slide, but. So, Getting started, um, so think about both practical and personal aspects of working together, consider the logistics for how your team will operate. Um, so reach out to people that you think that you might wanna have on, on your team and invite them to meet with you. Um, and then you can um, talk about when and where you'll meet and all of those things, uh, what role each member might have, uh, how you're going to communicate uh, and and how often, things like that, all those things that you need to think about, um, and how you'll get needed approvals for whatever activities that you all end up deciding um, would be the best way to go. And then, yeah, just to uh, um, agree on expectations and, and things like that. It's also important to take some time to get to know one another. This is really important because everybody works differently. We all have um, different characteristics and traits that help make us, um, you know, process problem solving differently. Uh, we all do tasks differently. Some people are very last minute people in getting things done, while some people have things done a month ahead of time. And getting to know each other and understanding how you all work can actually make it a little bit easier to work together so that, you know, if the person that gets the things done three weeks ahead of time is waiting for maybe someone that gets something done last minute, they can still have trust and confidence because they know that you function differently. So just kind of, you know, working through those processes together. And if you work together with people a lot, then you probably already have some of those things figured out. Um, but that will help with relationship building and that will help strengthen your team together. Um, yeah, talking about what your organization and uh, practice can offer the team and educating each other about your respective professional cultures. That's something to really think about too, coming, you know, education and, and health. We all know that there's a, a gap there that we, we bridge all the time. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, getting off to a strong start strong and successful teams, more about this. Um, we are gonna take a, a quick minute to just think about 
um, teams that um, that are strong and successful teams that you've worked in in the past and try to define what made them work so well together. And I want you to try to pop some of those ideas in the in the chat, what's made those strong, successful teams that you've worked with in the past work really well together. Start throwing those in the chat. And, and in a minute here, we'll have Penny read some of them off. Um, so far, I see common goals with no equal, no egos and mutual respect, good communication. Those are great. And Tammy, just a time check, we have about 10 minutes left of our time together. Awesome. Common goal with helping kids. And I'm going to keep going. So, um, I'm sure you've all had lots of experience, again, working on teams. Uh, many organizations rely heavily on teams. Um, so there's been a lot of research over the years on how to build and maintain a strong team. Um, gonna share some findings that came from Google um, that I hope you'll find as you uh, helpful as you uh, start to build your this particular team working on this particular program. So in 2012, Google set out to define the characteristics of effective teams. This is kind of fun, actually. Um, they defined effectiveness both by the performance outputs of the team and experience of the team members. As part of this initiative, they reviewed five years of academic research, studied 100 teams for over a year, and conducted over three years of surveys and interviews. One of the interesting aspects of this study is that some factors that they thought might be important in creating an effective team turned out not to matter. What did matter were these five factors. Psychological safety being the most important, that was the number one factor is, is feeling safe. Um, psychological safety means that team members need to feel safe taking risks, making mistakes, and asking questions. It means that everyone is comfortable participating and everyone contributes. It means members show empathy and kindness and respect towards each other. And it's an environment in which team members can think about the work instead of working on what their team members think of them as an individual, which I think someone said something like that earlier without egos. Did someone say that? Something similar? Yes, they did. Yeah. Subsequent researchers found uh, psychological safety particularly important for innovation and driving improvements as well as for high stakes situations. So, um, oh, we're supposed to read the debriefs right now, but is, is there any, oh, sorry. Whoops, things are getting crazy here. Uh, the other ones with the common goals, the ability to brief without judgment and learn from mistakes and a passion for the project. Passion for the what? Passion for the project. Awesome. Sweet. Okay. Um, and here's just a few more tips for your teams. Um, be prepared for challenges and take one step at a time. Recognize and draw on each other's strengths. Prioritize transparency. It's really important. And keep a sense of humor. Um, be each other's champions and um, stay connected. Timmy, we also have a question. Do you have sample communication to share with our potential team members for, what, for them to understand what we are doing and why? That's a great question. That's a really great question. And um, is that in relation to this team's program? I, I, I'm guessing so. Yes, yes. So that they yeah. understand really why we're coming at them with this and, um, you know, what the common goal is and, um, you know, just sort of coming from um, the DOE directly, like, so that they know it's not just something I'm making up. <laughs> yep, I understand. We must have some sort of like fact sheet, don't we, Tim, in our materials of like a one-pager about the, this program? We do. Yes. We're going to send you a lot of follow-up materials um, after. It probably is going to come in the next day or two. Um, there will be a host of things, including this presentation. Um, and in that, 
we will make sure that there is included some information about this particularly and why it's it's um, so important in helping to um, streamline like kind of quality in your schools. So yeah, we'll definitely make sure that there's um, something available for that. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right, next steps. What's our time look like, Penny? We have about five minutes. Neat, okay. So next steps. In between now and our next meeting in November, we would like for you to try and engage your, anyone that you might, this can be informal as well. Um, it doesn't have to be a, um, you know, formal, like we need to meet for two hours and, and do this thing. Um, but hold a first team meeting if you have identified team members that you are onboarding that are like, yeah, we're going to help you with this. Um, um, so try to just schedule, uh, you know, a little bit of time to meet with them. You can look at the HATS assessment together. Um, you can just kind of talk a little bit about the program and, um, you know, get that buy-in, um, and let them know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, and, um, and, you know, really talk a lot about what the value is in, in this program. So meet with your team, uh, access the hat. That's going to be really important. After, after the, you get this uh, email in the next day or two, whoops, hey, going too fast. Um, you're going to have uh, login information to the hats, uh, hats tool. Um, go into that tool. Before you talk to your team members, Explore that tool a little bit, see what it's all about. You'll have a better understanding of, um, of what is included in there, what information you're gonna be looking for. And that will also help you figure out who would be the best people to talk to in your school districts um, to onboard as team members, who you're gonna to wanna to work with. Um, so that's gonna be like really, before you meet with people, access the HATS tool because that will really help you narrow down who you're going to want on, on board. And then um, meet back here on November 12th. You can start the HATS tool if you want to. Go crazy. Um, it's not required in between this session um, and the next session, but I do think that you guys should really um, try to, to access it and, and then uh, figure out who you want on your team. And that's it. It's just time for questions and the answers. Perfect timing, Kim. You nailed that. We have two minutes left for final questions. I'm going to stop screen sharing. Um, you all Does anybody have else have any other questions? I don't see any in the chat except for the sample communication. Am I? Did I mess things up by already logging in to the to register for the hats? No. Nope. Okay. Not. I, I registered. I just haven't gotten anything back. So just so you know, if, if you're going to be doing something with that, I don't know. On the main AAP website. Yeah, no, I don't. I'm a little confused about you haven't gotten anything back. I, I just did it to, like this morning. So oh, okay, great. Just to prep yeah, yeah. no, no, go ahead. Jump right in. Yeah. Yeah, no, you don't need to wait for the information. It's really just a troubleshooting kind of worksheet. Yeah. Yep. Um, so you can go right to the AAP website if you want, or um, you can wait for the handout and it kind of walks you through how to register and get onto the HATS tool. Next time we come back, we're going to do kind of dive into, I believe, a lot more of the HATS tool, strategic planning, action planning, and all of those things. So... If there are not any other questions, I'm going to let you guys go back to your days. And I just want to thank everybody for joining today. Thank, thank you, guys. guys. Thanks, thank everyone. You. Did we stop the recording? Let me do that now. Thank, thank you. you.